Hey, what's up everybody? BDF44 coming at you. Laying down the bed comfortably because my Lakers had a victory that was quite honestly one of the better victories we've had in recent memory. See what I did there. But uh, yeah, man, I'm very, very pleased. I, I tell you, and I've said this on social media since the game ended, there have been championship teams uh, that the Lakers have had. Championship rosters that would not have won the game that we won tonight. They would have mailed it in and they would have went on to the next game and learned from it. But this team fought. This team basically took everything that they did in the first half wrong and got it right in the second half. I think that's a testament to our bench mob and a testament to our coaching staff. Um, Anthony Davis didn't have it tonight. LeBron James was awesome, completely awesome. But um, I got to give credit to guys like Quinn Cook, Alex Caruso, of course, Dwight Howard, who I think is sixth man of the year early on at this point. I haven't paid a close enough attention to have an educated opinion on that in terms of the rest of the league and what everybody else is doing. But I tell you, with when you look at our record, you look at what he's done, his con contributions, um, if there was a such thing as a sixth man of the month, he would get that. He would get that for sure, in my opinion. So... Yeah, Dwight Howard's kicking butt first through the first seven games of the year. He has helped us win games that maybe otherwise we wouldn't have won if he wasn't down there. Um, and, you know, this is just like I always say, God works in mysterious ways. I, I would have put all the money I had in the world on the fact that Dwight Howard would not be a Laker again. And if he were a Laker again, I wouldn't be happy to see him here and he wouldn't be this productive. Well, guess what? All of that is not the case. He's been my favorite Laker of the season. <laughs> through seven games he's been my favorite Laker and um, this is coming from somebody who wasn't a big fan of Dwight Howard didn't like his energy last time he was here didn't feel like he was really here to be a Laker you know the whole thing was just bad and you know his path to to where he is right now you could just tell that 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 there was there was something special going on with his career in the first eight years of his career he was a Hall of Famer um, things didn't go right no need for me to speak on that but he's gone all around the league had some tough breaks been tossed away by teams that didn't want him and went through some very tough stuff off the court that really changed his life changed his mindset changed even his his whole spirit and his whole approach to basketball health issues obviously well documented the back and everything this dude is playing some of the best basketball of his career some of the most meaningful basketball of his career and I think he deserves a championship. I'm saying that as a fan of the Lakers, as a fan of him right now, and just as a testament to how well he's played. I think, I think it would be a wonderful blessing for the guy to, to win the ring with the Lakers this year. Um, the way that he's playing, I just hope that he continues to stay healthy, continues to stay focused, and be honest with you, with the, the supporting cast that we have, um, I don't see why he can't continue this throughout 82 games plus playoffs, honestly. I think that... He has the right people around him. The coaching staff is, is trusting him. We have the right defensive coaching staff that will put him in positions to continue to do the things that he's good at. And uh, he's shooting some of the best percentages of his, of, of, his, of his career, really. I mean, he hasn't missed a shot <laughs> in the last couple games. And he's just been a powerful, powerful presence for our team. And, uh, you know, I could. this is the best-case scenario for his tenure as a Laker, seven games in. I mean, we couldn't ask for better. And I just, uh, I really, really want him to continue to play the way that he's playing. He's been great. Um, yeah, man, it's just, it's, it was really good to see Kyle Kuzma back out there playing well. Um, he didn't really start off the game looking too good. You know, first half, he didn't look like himself. We were turning the ball over. I got to give credit to the, the Bulls coaching staff in the first half. Had their team really playing some great defense. Uh, Dunn was playing great. Kobe White bounced back after having a very bad week and a half. Um, you know, they just had some really good good play out of their players in Chicago. And like I said, they have a very nice future. I said in my last video, I think their future is bright. They have a lot of young talent there that they could use. And I, I saw some good things from them defensively in the first half. But in the second half, Frank Vogel just pressed the right buttons. He set Anthony Davis, who was having a bad game for his his standards, a very bad game for his standards on the offensive end. Defensively, he was doing everything that we needed him to do um, before – you know, he, he set LeBron, he set AD, and he played the bench mob, and those guys came through. Uh, we got what we needed out of them. 
Uh, special shout out to Troy Daniels. He hit a big, had a big four point play, even though he missed the, the free throw. It was a very big four point play. He's been good for us. Like I said, Alex Caruso, uh, Quinn Cook had a huge game for us, hitting shots and things of that nature. We got what we needed from our bench, and they got us that lead. You know, they they erased a, ni- a 19 point deficit basically with the help of the great King King James, who I think is just playing MVP basketball right now. I tell you, man. I have something on my mind about King James right now, and I, I want to wait this out. I want to wait this out because I'm not really ready to declare anything that I'm thinking just yet. But I will say this. The way that he's playing right now, he's creeping up on some people historically. I mean, a lot of people have him at number one. I don't think he can reach Michael Jordan simply because of Michael Jordan's, um, you know, his his record in the finals coupled with you know, just his sheer greatness and his numbers and his MVPs and all that stuff. You just really can't touch Jordan at this point. But, you know, I want to see LeBron James win this particular championship. If he wins this particular championship, there's going to be some things to say about where he stands amongst the Mount Rushmore that is going to be simply undeniable. I don't care if you like him, dislike him, whatever. This is year 17, and he is playing MVP basketball on a team that is just running through the league. And let me tell you, it's still very, very early, so I'm not foolish enough to say uh, that I just am shooing us into anything. A lot has to continue to go right. We do have a lot of older players on this team. We do have a lot of guys who've had history in this league. Um, so a lot of things have to continue to stay on the course. But what I'm seeing from my team, we're clicking on every cylinder, all cylinders. And uh, it's, it's, it's being led by LeBron James. I mean, the dude is just playing absolutely great for my squad right now and defensively he's been very very good and that's what I wanted to see from him we know what he can do offensively nothing that he's done offensively is going to surprise us at this point he can control a basketball floor by himself and has been that way since for the last 20 years almost 17 years to be exact but I mean he could offensively he can always do anything but defensively he is playing fantastic team defense He's staying in front of his guys. He's taking charges. He's being smart. And, uh, you know, this is the complete opposite of what he gave us last year when he was playing with those kids. I mean, this is this is the defense of LeBron James that, that we want to see. He, he's not a world beater defensively individually right now. Uh, but at the same time, you just don't see him making too many bad plays and you don't see him letting people go blow past him. He's blocking shots. He's getting boards. He's just playing great team defense, and we have great individual defensive players that are putting together a a conglomerate that our coaching staff, which seems to be defensive-minded, can really work with. So I'm just, I'm super thrilled. Seven games in, it's still super early. I've watched a lot of basketball in my life. I've seen teams have fast starts and then slow down with one or two injuries here or there, with distractions, and, you know, we are in the very beginning of the season. So I preface everything I'm saying by saying, let's just keep it up and and, and continue to take each and every game seriously. But what I saw tonight was a team that there have been teams that won championships that wouldn't have won this game. Um, I've always said, and I think you'll see that in maybe one or two of my videos, that when we play the Chicago Bulls, no matter who's on the roster, if the Lakers are playing the Bulls, it's going to be a gritty game, it's going to be a tough game, and it's going to be a game where we're probably going to score in the lows as opposed to scoring high. And this was no exception. It's been like that since I've been watching basketball, whether it was Michael Jordan, whether it was Elton Brand, uh, Derrick Rose. It didn't matter who was on the Bulls. And it didn't matter which gym. It could have been in Staples, could have been here, or it could have been in the United Center. It just doesn't matter. When those two teams get together, for whatever reasons, it's usually a mucky game. It's usually a fight game. Y'all can go back and look at the highlights of every Bulls-Laker matchup since I've been alive. They always are tough games. And um, rarely are they pretty. I don't know what that's about. It just is what it is. But I'll tell you this. Today was no exception. The Lakers were down by 19. Um, We weren't getting a whole lot out of Anthony Davis for his standards, even though he finished with fantastic numbers and he was blocking shots. Even we were down. Even though we were down, he was doing things defensively that were just elite, and he kept us hanging around. But when we set him down and brought in that bench mob, Boy, did those guys hit shots and play great defense. And and I just give a whole lot of credit to the coaching staff for pressing that button, for trusting his bench, 
Frank Vogel might be the coach of the year early on. I mean, coach of the week, whatever, you know, it's still super early. You want to preface everything by saying you understand that, but this team is, is steamrolling and they're winning games that I don't think a lot of Laker rosters would have won, and this was one of them. I mean, I've watched a lot of basketball. We don't win those kind of games. We're down by 19 on the road at the tail end of a, of a road trip. On the East Coast in the cold weather, you know, you usually mail it in. You usually mail it in. Or you usually get close but can't finish it off. And and and, and LeBron's team tonight, uh, you know, that bench mob, they just didn't. They came out of the locker room with the right idea. I look at this team as a second-half team. Uh, I'm, I'm learning that we – it doesn't really matter what we do in the first half because we're going to come out in the second half, third quarter, and fourth quarter, and we're going to play a lot better. I like that identity, but I do like for us to get a – I would like to see us get bigger uh, leads to start the game so we don't have to fight our way back, so we don't have to blow people out in the second half, and we can kind of give our, our stars a little bit of a uh, rest. But I did appreciate the fact that we were able to do that tonight uh, even though the, we were down. AD got a lot of rest tonight, um, and, and that was a very important thing. So, yeah, man, uh, I would love to say this was a great win, but I don't think that's the way to describe it. If anything, it was just a fantastic, valiant effort to fight back and, and regain control against a team that we outclass. Um, we didn't play well in the first half, and, and I gave credit to the Bulls uh, for, for studying us and jumping passing lanes and taking advantage of some really lackluster passes. They were getting steals left and right. Um, so I want to give credit to their coaching staff for, for how they've studied our team because you could tell that they were prepared for us uh, in the first half. But somehow, some way, that, that bench, that Laker bench that's supposed to be not very good, quote-unquote, they went to work, man. They went to work and they got it done, so... Yeah, I just wanted to get on here and, and say something about this particular game. I, there's been some other games back, you know, over the last couple of weeks that I could have came on here and, and gave a little rundown for, but I, my head was elsewhere. But this game was so unique in a sense that I don't think too many Laker teams that I've ever watched would have won this game, and we did. So I, I think this is a championship-caliber team. Um, I know this is, and if we can stay healthy, um, I don't know who's going to beat us in a seven-game series. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, the Clippers still have to have Paul George return. And when he does return, we will see an entirely different Clipper team. Um, and they're going to be very tough to beat, even for us. I know that. And I, and I, I respect that. Um, the Philadelphia 76ers are a very tough team as well. So if we run into them, uh, they have size. Uh, they, they can match up with us pretty well as well. So you should have a healthy... Uh, a healthy respect for them in a seven-game series against us as well if we were to see them in the finals. But honestly, I don't know who else could really see us. I really don't. I don't know, especially if we're going to win games like this. So, yeah, I love my team right now, man. I couldn't be more happy with our with, with the roster from top to bottom, the coaching staff. Everybody is overachie- overachieved, and it's been the best-case scenario thus far. And what a victory, man. The Lakers beat the Chicago Bulls today in Chicago. Very, very tough game. We were down by 19. So thank you guys for watching. That's my take on the game. And, uh, yeah, go Lakers. BDF.